I'd like to welcome everyone to worship and say Merry Christmas. It is a joy to come together to celebrate the birth of Christ. For folks at home, we are grateful that you can join us from the safety of your home. And we do want to apologize in advance. We can uh, start praying. For some reason, the, this is the camera angle that we have. The camera is not responding to movement, so you're going to see a lot of this and you're going to miss you're going to hear some beautiful music but you're not going to be able to see unless we're all saying a little prayer in our hearts right now that the camera will start responding to to the movement uh, and also for folks at home uh, later in the service we're going to be singing silent night and lighting candles and i would encourage you to go find a candle in your home and then light it with us when we get there at the beginning i uh, wanted to create a space for uh, folks for whom the holidays and this day is a challenging time uh, because they're uh, because of grief because of you have lost loved ones so I wanted to begin by lighting a candle of remembrance and then saying a prayer gracious God we are grateful for love that gives us joy and breaks our hearts for those living and those departed we know we are surrounded by your grace and your mercy. For those departed, today is a day filled with joy and dancing and song. The only sadness they might feel is that their loved ones down here are missing them. We can imagine that their greatest wish is that we know their joy and with their blessing experience our own. So on this sacred night when we celebrate the gift that is God with us, may our joy be complete as we worship you together. Amen. And now for the lighting of the Christ candle. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us, that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, he was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated. Our joy is complete. And our peace is sealed. Rejoice, a Savior is born. A Savior is born. Joy to the world. Let us stand and sing in body or in spirit as we sing Joy to the World. Hymn number 146 in the Red Hymnal.
may be seated. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious, loving, and merciful God on this Christmas Eve, as the light of your word penetrates our hearts, as we are reminded of the gift of life and faith, as the glories of the heavenly hosts are echoed in our church's sanctuary and in the homes of all who join us both far and near, we open ourselves up to your spirit and give you thanks. We are grateful, Lord Jesus, that your story has become our story, and we celebrate your birth and take to heart the wonder of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Reading from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our second scripture reading tonight is Luke 2, 1 to 14. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Sam, you need to tell me, are you going to be mortified if you come up by yourself, or should I just do? Do you want to come up? You don't have to. Okay. All right. Are you sure? <laughs> I, was, I was going to play with the crash. No? Okay. All right. Now I'm saying a prayer. All right, Lord. Plan B. Plan B. So, we have been, uh, during Advent, during the time with children, just using this to, to talk about uh, Jesus' birth and Christmas. And I was talking with a friend this week, and she's doing the same thing. She did this cool thing, and I realized I had done this years ago, and I had forgotten that, uh, about it. But she placed the, the different characters like a distance, like they were traveling, right? And so each week they would like move one windowsill up, right? Wouldn't that, isn't that cool? Like, so these are the, the wise ones or the magi. They don't show up until like epiphany, right? Uh, which is after Christmas. I'm going to put them back because, right? But so they're, they're still a distance away. And and the shepherds, not quite there. There's an announcement tonight with, with the angels that we just heard about. So they're still, they're closer. They're not, they're not quite as far. My, my friend Roberta was just saying, those, my, the kids were very, very worried about those shepherds. Why were they not, you know, getting close? And here we have Mary. Oh, but she's... She's pregnant still. And this, I have never seen a crash that, that had a pregnant Mary and then a Mary holding baby Jesus. And I, always, and I love the fact that she's holding baby Jesus. And it, we know that Jesus puts, um, or Mary puts, and puts Jesus in a manger. But I really like the fact that he's, that he's being held and loved so if you can imagine, right now, it's just family, and they're all looking at Jesus, and they're thanking God. And if we do that, then we will have celebrated Christmas. Now, Sam, I'm, I'm going to bring this back to you. I hope you love this. I found a coloring page that has a shepherd without a face, because I know the, the, the crush... With the kids, if you haven't been here, the fact that the this set they don't have faces was very troublesome to the children. <laughs> so I got a picture where you can draw in a face, and on the back it says um, "Thank you," and then you can fill in uh, for everything you've done for me this Christ- Christmas. Love blank. So I was going to encourage you to thank your big people in your life for all that they have done to make this Christmas special for you. So I'm going to run this back to you. There are crayons and pencils and all that stuff in the back if you want to grab it. Okie doke. Shall we say a little prayer? Uh, Gracious God, thank you for Jesus, for the gift of his birth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening. The third scripture reading is Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations 
his mar marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Let us stand and sing in body or in, or in spirit, angels we have heard on high, hymn number 152.
fourth scripture reading is Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our greatest God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is who gave himself for us that he may redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous and for good deeds. At this time, I would like to invite the ushers forward for the giving of our tithes and offerings as the choir sings. Go tell it on the mountain. response to God is gratitude and service. We have given from our treasure stores. Let's let Howard Thurman remind us how we are to give of our lives. This is a Christmas prayer. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, 
the work of Christmas begins, to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Amen. You are invited to stand in body or in spirit as we sing O Holy Night, which is number, well, I'm not going to point it, I'm going to ask you to follow up there because there are three verses and in the hymnal there are only two. So if you do want to open to 160, you can, but know that the third verse, you're going to have to look up at the screens.
say praise God Dave played that so loudly we sounded brilliant our last scripture lesson comes from the gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 15 through 20 when the angels had left them and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, and let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So reading from the Common English Bible, Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Common English Bible, the translators were brave enough to translate Cataluma, which has been, which we all heard in, there was no room for them in the inn, but the Greek word, and we talked about this last year, and I'm sure you heard it before I arrived, but Cataluma is a guest room. It's the, it's the same word as the upper room. It's not like an outside barn. And in Jesus's time, we're going to talk a little extra, architecture, construction of buildings. Houses were built, if the family had enough money, there would be two stories. And on the first floor, when you would enter in, there would be a place to keep your animals. Right? They would come in at night for their safety, for warmth. And then you would, there would be some steps up to the main area where there would be a hearth, and that's where they would, the family would eat, and they would also sleep there. And if they had the means, there would be an upstairs, a cataluma, a guest room. And since all of Joseph's family, is everybody's going to Bethlehem, the room is full. So there's no room for them upstairs. So Mary has the baby downstairs in the manger area. And, oh, and the manger, because there would be the floor and there would be the steps up, and the manger would be carved out in the floor on the upper level, and that's where the animals would, would, would eat. So it's amazing to me how, you know, we read the story every year, and it, and I knew about the architecture thing for years. I knew that the upper room was, you know, the uh, Cataluma was an upper room and that they were there. It struck me this year, and maybe you've already thought about this, that if the house was full, Mary and Joseph were not all by themselves. I can imagine like when, when, when Mary is giving birth, there was probably a midwife there. And can you imagine, I, I imagine all the men upstairs. I don't know whether they had cigars, but maybe they're rolling cigars up there, right, awaiting the birth. And I imagine the women downstairs fussing and tending 
and telling their stories and you know, someone's you know, telling jokes and people are reminding Mary to <laughs> to breathe and there's water being drawn and there's hands being held and there's prayers being said and Jesus is born surrounded by love and family and that's part of the human experience too Jesus came to experience it all we know that at the end of it, at the end of his life he is deserted but at the beginning he is surrounded by love and i and i imagine they passed him around and i do imagine there was one at least one i can't raise my one eyebrow you know, but we, we were practicing this with the kids at the play. Only one of, one of the kids, little Scarlet, she can rock that little one eyebrow up. Uh, but I imagine some raised eyebrows about, you know, there, things weren't quite done in the order they were supposed to have been done in. So there might have been a little whispering in the back. And that's part of the human experience, too. But Jesus came to experience it all. We read in our birth narrative that he was to be named Emmanuel, which means God with us, God with us through it all. And in the Gospel of Matthew, it starts with God with us, and the very last thing Jesus says at the end of the Gospel is, remember, I am with you always until the end of the age. We celebrate this day, God with us through the ups and the downs. God is with us, and we praise God. And like I said with the kids, and when we have that moment where we can just breathe deeply and rest in the knowledge that God is that we belong to God and that God will walk with us through the ups and downs and the windy journey that is this life. We will have celebrated Christmas. God is with us. Emmanuel, Christ is born. Merry Christmas. We are going to sing silent night i am going to light my candle from the christ candle and then i'm inviting the ushers forward and they are going to light their candles from mine and then they are going to go down the rows and light your candles as we sing and here's the trick if your candle is lit keep it up and down if you are lighting your candle Turn it to the side and then make sense. Let us stand and sing with joy and celebrate our Savior, Silent Night.
now receive this blessing. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Merry Christmas. Go in peace.